Hey, welcome back to the garage. I uh, got a good one for you guys today. Um, I got asked by a friend of mine uh, who's having a social. Uh, for those of you who live in Manitoba, you know what that is already. Uh, for those in Ontario, it's a good old buck and dough. Uh, essentially what it is, is a fundraiser for a wedding. Uh, so he is getting married and he's putting together some prizes for a raffle or a draw. Uh, and he's doing a sports package. And I asked him if he would want a acrylic sign uh, made for that. And he said, yeah, for sure, that sounds great. Uh, so that's what we're going to tackle today. Uh, it's going to look nice. It'll be acrylic. Uh, we'll look at a couple wood species that we're going to make the frame out of. Um, I have made these in the past with the LED strips and the little remote thinger. And you can change the colors. It looks all nice. But the one downside with those are they need to be plugged in. Not everyone has an outlet near where they want to hang these things. So we're going to try sneak one of these in there. Now, I've never done this before. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but... Uh, I think we can pull it off. So make this one battery powered with a little flipper switch somewhere. Uh, make it look nice and clean, classy like. Yeah, it's not gonna be huge. I'm thinking 18 by 18 on the outside. We don't want this to be massive, right? We're gonna miter the corners because we're fancy like that. Like so. Like I said, we'll do 18 by 18. Little logo in the middle here. And she's gonna get lit up fancy like. So it'll look real cool. Uh, yeah, let's get to it. Here are the two boards I'm kinda hemming and hawing about. Uh, we got good old walnut here on the right. Uh, used to working with that stuff. And I picked up something new, uh, Sapele, I think it's pronounced. That's a hardwood from Africa. Uh, apparently it's a lot like teak where it's rod resistant. Uh, price is right, so I figured what the heck. Uh, but after doing a little bit of research, I found out that this can be a real pain to work with because the grain is super tight. So it does have a tendency to chip out when you're planing and routing, which we're going to be doing both of those. So as much as I'd like to give this a whirl, I think for this one, we're going to stick with trusty old black walnut. I mean, who can go wrong with this? Nice and dark in color. It turns out real uh, rich when you put a finish on it. So I think it's really going to make that sign pop. I'll save this for a later project, something for my own. So if it does look like, like poop, that's my problem, not uh, not someone else's. So walnut it is. So like I said, we're gonna make these 18 inches long. Um, whoa, tape measure close up. And I'm thinking about two inches wide. I want this to have a nice modern look to it. So I can only get two rails uh, out of one width here. So it means we're gonna have to go 36. We're gonna make that 30, 39, what the heck, we'll make it 40 in case we make a mistake. So we'll be able to get two rails uh, out of each length here. Now the fan of the show was telling me that a lot of the times my arms were in the way when I was making these cuts. So with that new tripod I got, hopefully this works out a little better. Thanks for the tip. Now the edges on this don't come finished on either side, they're rough sawn. So we're gonna take it to the joiner here, clean up one of these sides, make it nice and square, then we'll be able to take it to the saw and rip our pieces up. Okay, so I went and cut those pieces in half, so now we've got our four, uh, I want to say styles and rails, but that's for a door. There are four sides for a picture frame. Now to cut the miters, we're going to use this nifty little jig uh, that I made. So this is a picture frame jig or a miter jig, uh, and what's good about it is that as long as these two pieces are at a perfect 90, uh, so you just make sure that is when you build it, it doesn't matter what angle they are and corresponds to the blade, as long as you make one cut here and the corresponding cut here, you're always going to get a perfect 45. Okay, all those cuts are made for the A side. I got the stop lock here 
I've already measured to where our 18 inch outside is gonna be. So this is gonna allow us to do is just put each one on, put it up against the stop, pass it through, and we're gonna have all of them at exactly the same length. That's, now the size isn't crucial, I think this is off by a little bit. Not a big deal because we're gonna cut the groove on the inside, or the rabbit I should say, and then measure to see how big we need to cut that acrylic. So that's what's kind of nice about kind of designing and building your own. You don't have to stick to any of the measurements. It's good thinking right there. Turn back. Okay, got those little cut out. I put them in my strap clamp or band clamp. These things are really handy if you do a lot of picture frames or anything uh, mitered like this. Uh, and just with first inspection, everything's looking pretty tight. And you can see we have A, B, A, B, A, B, and so on. So those angles all look really good. So now that we got that test fit, we're gonna take it apart and then work on the groove that's gonna accept that plexiglass on the back side. So here's what I think we're gonna do. So I marked out, I think we're gonna go down half an inch that way. So cut down half an inch, or probably go through half of this material here. So that accept the plexi, but that'll give us lots of space so we can probably do some sort of cavity here, set that battery inside the wood Right, it'll probably sit. Well, that doesn't leave us a lot of room, but we'll we'll set it in there. And then we'll be able to use that 9 volt battery snap to just wrap around in here and tie into that LED strip. I think that's what we're gonna do. Then maybe make some sort of small plate uh, to hold that in there. Yeah, we'll see. We're just gonna run this through multiple times. I'm too lazy to put the dado stack in there. It's not necessary and uh, cut that groove. And for gosh sakes, do not have these upside down. You don't wanna be flipping flopping these things. That's not gonna fit properly after. Make sure you can see your letters before you stick it in there. Don't come crying to me if you make a mistake. And our first pass, I'm just gonna slide this over so we cut it the blade with. Okay, so we got to put back together. Uh, now we're just gonna have to measure the distance between here and here, and then we're gonna cut our acrylic insert to fit. A lot easier to do it this way, in my opinion, than to have that acrylic first, and then trying to get these miters uh, to fit around there. Okay, we got the sign all made up here. I had a buddy of mine do this with his laser. Um, so it's all good to go. There's lots of ways you can actually just old school with the Dremel and not line, but uh, I was fortunate enough to have that hookup, so. We got that done. Get a little test fit. Fits in there nice. And there should be just enough space to get that LED strip in there. So that's good. Uh, what we're gonna tackle now is we're gonna cut out that hole for the battery. Um, stick a switch in there, probably on the side here in case someone doesn't want to mount it on the wall. Um, I didn't want to put it on the bottom. They might want to lean in on a, a desk or something. So we'll put the switch on the side, give them that option. So we'll cut out a void here that we'll cover with the plate, put the switch in here, and then we're going to try to excavate through here to get that wire through. So um, I'm not sure how that's going to look like, but uh, yeah, we'll give that a shot. And I'm not the best with the chisel. I mean, I'm not even chiseled myself. But we're gonna come in here and just get rid of these corners. No, it's kind of hard to see, but I did, uh, did the best that I could with that setup I got. Now the key here is just to go nice and slow. We don't wanna take off anything we don't want to. It's really delicate operation here at this point. We're at the point of no return. 
mistake and it's start over time. I hope this battery fits depth wise. This is easy, but about to go down another quarter inch. Oh, that'd be fun. Well, good news and bad news. Good news. Well, it fits in there good. I like that. Bad news is I got to go down that much plus the thickness of the plywood. Oh, pipe dream with that quarter inch prediction. I'm starting to get a little nervous doing this. And slip and it's restart time. It's like a swear word. Whoops. There's my island keys. And we we're getting there. Oh, this is such a chicken out of drill down a little deeper but that's a conversation i'll have to have with myself later i suppose just keep digging all right well there's our hole and the battery fits in there with room for that cover now there's a lot of wiggle room so we need the battery staff it somewhere so there that wasn't so bad it took me oh 20 minutes all right so here's my plan uh what we're going to try to do is we got this marked out already I'm gonna put the switch right there. So drill a hole. Get our pencil here. Drill a hole that's gonna go right to about here. That should give us enough clearance for the wires to bend down. Yeah, lots. And then we're gonna come in. And we're gonna drill a hole uh, this way so that we can match up with it. Get the wires to come in through here. And then come into this part here, drill another hole into where the battery goes. So in theory, we should be able to get wire coming in from here, down and through there, and back out this way, and have it all hidden. I mean, in my head, this sounds like a good plan, but uh, yeah, sometimes what I think of doesn't really come out well in the real world. So I, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how this works here. Worst case scenario, you know, you just hit the old restart button and, and try again. But I think I think we'll be okay. Okay, got those holes done. Wire comes in through here, down, and right it through. Uh, so perfect. Yeah, it's gonna work and it's gonna hide that wire. Real nice. Now before we glue all this up, what I want to do is put a chamfer on the outside here, uh, the part that's closest to the inside of the frame. So I got my chamfering bit uh, in my router. We're going to run that through all pieces and just going to give it a nice little decorative uh, look to it. All right, so if you can see the little chamfer that I put on there, so just a nice little decorative touch. Uh, what we're gonna do now is sand the inside because once that's glued together, it's kind of a pain to get to. So I'm just gonna give this a light sand, and not a final thing, uh, just to get rid of any burn marks that might be there or uh, little nicks and dings. We'll get rid of that now and glue it up. Okay, all ready for glue up. Uh, I put the wires in first. I think that's gonna be easier uh, then trying to feed that through those tight bends when it's glued together. So we're going to glue them with the wires in. Uh, I left a lot extra uh, that we can cut it shorter, a lot harder to cut it longer and shorter. Yeah. Son of a... Haven't heard back from tight bond. Maybe <laughs> one day. This bank clamp's nice. It wasn't that expensive. It's got the Mastercraft version here. You a good old C-Tire. A lot of my stuff's from C-Tire. Stuff's okay. Decent price. So big thing when gluing this up is to make sure our corners meet and not off. That's going to ruin everything if they're off a little bit. Looks good. Good. That's better. 
Here you go. So we'll wait for that to dry, scrape off the glue, sand it, put a coat of spray on, um, varathene on it, and uh, then we'll get to wiring it all up. Let's wire this up. Add it up through here. All right, so here's our RGB strip we're going to use. Where the heck's the camera lens on there? So there's four tabs. There's a common positive, and then a red, green, and blue. Uh, we're just going to go with the blue one. You can cross some of these to get different colors. Uh, but for our sign, we just want blue, so we're going to hook up our positive to the 12 plus and our negative to the blue. And you can see if you go blue, red, green, and if you cross two, the magenta, and whatever that color that's supposed to be. Just like that. Blue, off. Now the adhesive strip on here is fine, uh, but we're going to throw a couple dabs of super glue just for good measure. So I can never get this off. Who the heck are they trying to keep out of this? Uh, just a couple drops. I got a scrap piece of wood here. I'm gonna throw a couple of clamps while that glue cures. It's gonna give it five minutes. Ugh. Hate this stuff. Good old hot snot. Uh, there is a time and a place. I'm just gonna make sure there's no chance of a short. Doesn't need a lot. Oh, sorry, Chase. Okay, we got it in there. It's drying. Got my plate all done. You ready to see this thing lit up in no time? Yeah, filming in the dark here, but uh, here we got it. Light goes on. Now it's tough to see because of the reflection. There it is. One wireless LED lit up acrylic picture frame. You take this with you wherever you want. Oh, there you go. You can see that a little better. And there you have it. Thanks for watching.